Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Wilson here with Paul Typhoon Cheng. Paul uh, is a MMA fighter, is a uh, C C former CFLer, played football in university, is an actor, is a stuntman, uh, rubbing shoulders with the stars, uh, is a current coach. And uh, is there anything you don't do, my friend? Uh, I try to do a little bit of everything. I, I, I like to try anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations first, and we'll talk about it at the end on your undefeated season, winning the championship in the China Football League. Oh, thanks so much. That was a, that was one of the best, one of my best sports moments, I have to say. One of the things that I wanted to start this interview out uh, with um, was something that somebody else told me about you, and it was Ryan Christian Ventura. And he is an awesome uh, a ring announcer for BFL, for Prime, and he's b bouncing back from the U.S. and Canada. And uh, there was a time in his life when uh, he was pretty, he was overweight by about 100 pounds, he said. And you pulled him aside, and you had a big brother talk with him. And you said that, uh, hey, Ryan, if you want to be the best ring announcer in the world, you got to look the part. And he looked at you, and, and he started doing little micro goals where he started drinking more water, cutting out the carbs, training better, and dieting. And he says, you know, I never really thought Paul Chang would put, put me aside and have that talk to me. But it had a measurable effect on him. He dropped 100 pounds, and uh, I just wanted to make sure that you heard that story from me if he didn't tell you directly. Oh, I, yeah, he, I, I did, uh, he did tell me. Oh, Ryan, by the way, fantastic guy great ring announcer. I, I really actually wish that he would have introduced me one time. Uh, it never really happened, but at the same time, I did get to meet him personally. And it was one of those things. Um, I went to WWE camp years ago, a couple years back. And then um, William Regal kind of told us, you know, you want to be a wrestler? Look like a wrestler. Look smart. So, and then, and I, and then Ryan was just fantastic in every, everything he did. And I was just sitting there going like, man, he just feel like I miss, he's missing something, just like a look. But now, and then and I kind of pulled him aside and said some stuff. And I didn't really, I, I, not, not realizing he would take heart. And then and the guy lost 100 pounds and he's participated in kickboxing tournament. I follow him all the time. But yeah. I seen his career bloom like a flower. So yeah. I'm just like, I'm super, super proud of the guy. Hey, what's up, Ryan? Hey, keep up the work. And, and hey, too bad I I, I always wish that he got to announce my name one time in the cage, but it didn't happen. But you know what? Hey, my girlfriend's fighting one of these days, so hopefully that'll happen eventually. There you go. We'll talk about Alicia in a little bit here, but uh, um, that's awesome. And I wanted you to know that uh, I think it's really important that people realize that not just who you are and what you've done in your life, but there are, you've, you've had a really positive impact on other people's lives um, in the industry. And, uh, and it's always nice when I, I love hearing – somebody else say something good about somebody like you so that was awesome but hey let's talk about your journey into martial arts could it because it is one with twists and turns that don't even make sense to me but talk to me about baby paul chang and uh and in coming to canada and that whole process well um i was born in taipei taiwan um i grew up in taiwan till age till about nine years old i moved to uh, toronto uh Toronto, Ontario, when I was uh, just before 10. And yeah, and then I grew up in Toronto. Um, I, was, I, I was that new Asian kid with a, a straight parted hair and a big Coke bottle glasses. We had a good laugh about that the other day. Um, I used to get picked on a lot. I didn't speak English at all. So yeah, so it was an interesting, uh, it was kind of a real culture shock for me when I came to uh, Canada because just just to say it was, it was like you know in taiwan all mostly all taiwanese uh, chinese people and you know it was a big culture shock but at the same time you know like and yeah and be, you know coming coming to canada and not being able to speak english, english you did get I, I did get bullied a bit um had an interesting story you know um first first time i um uh what first uh, one of the first times i was in elementary school first day and then I was just like, I, I guess I looked at a kid wrong, but yeah. And then he told me to F you. So, but I didn't know what that meant. So I went to ESL class 
ask my teacher and what 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 is F U and I ended up in detention and didn't realize what I thought it was food, but I guess it wasn't. So yeah, I figured that out a few months later or a couple a couple days later that it was uh, yeah swearing. So yeah, I learned one of my first swear words on the first day of school. <laughs> Man, that's uh, unfortunate. Um, but how do you rebound from that at elementary school? Um, I, you know, I guess you don't really. Kids are quite mean, to be honest. You know, you get picked on. And then, like, you get classified as a nerd, nerdy kid that didn't really speak English. So, you know, I had to try to learn, learn to communicate. I, I basically, all I knew was A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or something like that. And um, I'm glad I'm a fast learner. And then I picked up the language. And, yeah, so... So here I am, and then I ended up going to Chaminade College School um, from elementary school, and I was a, and then I, you know, like I was kind of like a oh, little chunky, little overweight, wasn't the best athlete, didn't make any elementary school team, but it seemed like in high school it kind of turned the corner, and I got put, um, I got introduction to football. But there was, a, but there was a moment right when, uh, and this is maybe what you're sorry for interrupting. You might be started to talk about this, but there was a moment where. The Buffalo Bills were involved, weren't they? Oh, yeah, yes, totally. Yeah, I turned on the TV and then saw this game of football. And then and I saw the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills play, play on TV. And then I was just like, I was fascinated by this game. And then from then on, I was just like, I want to play this sport. And my parents were like, are you crazy? <laughs> what are you doing? Like, are you, are you crazy? What are you doing? There's no Asian kids play this game. So, yeah. But I, I, I insisted, so grade nine, went out for the football team, didn't really tell my parents. And then, you know, and then after I played four years, um, four or five years in high school, well, actually five years because in Ontario at OEC at the time, that was like a million years ago. Um, yeah, I played high school football and we got a scholarship. Oh, and then I played four other sports in high school. So I was like, I think the only athlete in, in my high school history to play five five varsity sports in one season wow so what so were those five sports i played, played football basketball rugby track and uh through the shot put uh ran uh, uh and do, 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 what's the last one what's the last one i don't uh and wrestled yes wow and then i was i was provincial level for most of the sports so i made provincials in track uh, and wrestling and I was a football all star, and uh, uh, and I got invited to the provincial uh, rugby team. So I was pretty. So uh, from the beginning, I was a pretty diverse athlete. So I was able to kind of mimic. What, what, I was able to mimic whatever sport I was playing. So which worked out good at the end for MMA. Yeah, that's amazing. So wow, five 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 sports. You're you essentially that to me. You're obsessed with athletics, and it's something you're actually special you're really good at i i don't i don't want to say good but you know i was okay i was decent at a lot just a lot of different stuff so it seemed like you know it seemed like i was i i, I want to say jack of all trades great at not, not great at anything but i'm pretty good at everything so yeah yeah, yeah. Kind of worked out for mma and how did you get to bc for university uh football okay so yeah, I ended up. Um, at, um, I got recruited. My high school team didn't win one game. Um, so in four years playing there, we tied one game, and then uh, yeah, but and then I guess I um, I got recruited by UBC first, and then Simon Fraser came around, and I decided, and then coach I guess Coach Beaton came uh, at the time. Our head coach, Coach Beaton, came to Toronto and came to recruit me, and yeah. And then, and then I ended up at Simon Fraser University. Played five years there. Um, and finally, there. finally, your parents are happy now, right? You're like, hey, we don't have to pay for it. Did you get scholarship? Did you? Did yes, you I did. School? I did. I had an academic yeah. scholarship. I, I had an academic scholarship for one semester, and then I lost it. And then, and I ended up with an athletic scholarship for the rest of my uh, career. So they didn't have to pay too much, too my, uh, too much of my university. So uh, no. The, um, Thanks to Simon Fraser University, uh, they did take care of me pretty well, and I did get a degree. I did graduate with an economics degree, so uh, nice. in life. That's awesome. So you're there. You got your economics degree, Simon Fraser. 
And then how do you, how does the draft come for the CFL? Um, yeah. And then I, I was fortunate. Um, I ended up getting drafted in the first round in the, uh, in the CFL college draft by the BC Lions, six overall. Um, and yeah, I was, I guess I was the one of the first Asian kids to get drafted in the first round. That's your, and, and that's your, your, uh, yeah, jersey. That, here, here you go. That was my jersey. Um, the day, the day I got sent to Calgary, uh, Cato slipped it in my bag. Thanks so much, Cato. And it's one of my, uh, one of my prized possessions. I got a few, I got a few things that, 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 that I like that I keep. Well, you get into the draft and now you get, you're in the CFL. Talk to me about that experience, because I don't think it was exactly how you expected it. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, my God. I, you know, like, hey, you, you, they want to say flash uh, flash in the pan or, like, cup of coffee. Uh, basically, that was my CFL career. I got drafted first round sixth overall, and then I had seven regular season games in the Canadian Football League. And I got cut, like, five times. It was a pretty frustrating situation. You know, but looking back in all these years, looking back at all these years later, I was – you know, it, it was, it kind of made me sad, but a long time ago, because it was something I wanted to do my whole life. But you know what? I, I'm grateful that it happened. You know, most people don't get that far. And, you know, I, and I, I, you know, I got to play with some of my heroes, you know, Damon Allen, Sean Millington, James Harris. I was, was like, you know, guys that I used to have uh, their pictures on my wall. And now, and then I got to play with them, you know, even for, up to games, and then you know, but it, you know, I was there for the whole year, got up and down on practice squad and injury reserve, and and then, but I did get to live my dreams, just even if it's just for a little bit. Well, and I know we're we're doing sort of the the progression of your life, but once again, undefeated in China and world champions over there. That that's such a great comeback to ah, I didn't do what I want to do, and then boom, you get it through there. So I just want to make sure people realize that. You actually yeah. had an incredible experience. Years later, yeah. years later. <laughs> That's you saying that. I wasn't going to bring up the time. <laughs> yeah, so it, it was pretty funny. I, I tell you, um, my coach, Clint Dozell, uh, he's the head coach for the Philadelphia Soul in the AFL, which he was our coach. And he was sitting there going, like, he was a, he's a Hall of Fame quarterback in the Arena Football League. And uh, uh, one of the first things he was said to me, uh, once he found out how old I was, he was like, hey, Paul, I think you're only like, Five or six years younger than me. You, you should you should be like you should be in the Hall of Fame like me, not still playing. <laughs> I was like, like oh, I'm more like an artifact, like a historical <laughs> artifact on the field. This is it, it's amazing, and I love it. And you should take pride in that. Having said that, this is the most I've ever talked about football on an MMA channel. <laughs> but we can't even get there yet because you end up playing for a while, and then all of a sudden you don't jump in an MMA career. You become you get into acting. Yes. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, that was an interesting thing. I was sitting at a restaurant one day, and then I just, just kind of started doing auditioning and stuff like that. I had a friend, Daryl Kwan, DQ. Hey, what's up, DQ? Thanks so much um, for all, everything you've done for me, my friend. Um, and he found me. Uh, I was sitting in a restaurant. He showed up. He was like, hey, been looking for you. And I was like, huh, for what? He's sitting at a cactus club on, like, near Brentwood Mall. I still remember this day. And he's like, hey, come with me. I was like, what? What are you talking about? I gotta eat. I'm, I'm eating with my friends. He's like, just trust me. Come with me. And then went into a room, and all of a sudden, the director came out, picked me, and then all of a sudden, I got my face, my my body casted, and all of a sudden, I'm a, in a in the night in a museum movie. And then, and then three movies later, I was like, wow. Yeah. So hey, just just, just so everybody can, huh? just so everybody knows that you get pulled out of your meal at the Brentwood Mall. You're at, at, in the middle of your food to go do a casting show for Night at the Museum to do, to be one of Attila the Hun's hunts, right? Yes, yes, I was one of the Huns. Yeah, I was one of the Huns in all three movies. And one of the, one of the f funnest things I've ever done. One of the uh, best experiences of my life. And I and, I, and yeah, and and, and it kind of just started my acting career or a stunt career or whatever you might call it. My film yeah, career, yes. movie. And and you have moved in. You've you've worked out with The Rock, and and uh, you've met him. You've you've met and worked with uh, Robin Williams as well as um, uh, Ben Stiller. And uh, and you were also in uh, Deadpool. There's an interesting scene in the outtakes of that film that you were in as well. Correct? Yes. Yeah. So you know the, the guy. He you know. You, you see that butt cheek in the, and then he makes some of the guys jump. Yeah, that was me. And then, <laughs> yeah. And then in, in, in the extended edition, 
and then extended edition, you do see my face, and I would get into a little sword fight. Funny, right? A junk <laughs> sword fight. Ha ha. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it was a pretty, pretty interesting situation. You made fun of my junk for about 40 minutes. I, yeah, you know, I had to bite my tongue. To, I was like, man, I didn't realize my junk can be have so many damn names. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and you make I the rock. Right? Yeah, you, uh, yeah. I, I got I got a little bit part on skyscraper. He threw me on the floor like forty times, but nicest man in the world. I have to say, every everybody, anything everybody said about him is actually true. You know, one of the first first like A list actors to come introduce himself to me, introduce himself to me is like, hi. I heard we're working together. Hi, my name is DJ. I'm like, oh my god. I was like, are you kidding me? The Rock just introduced me to himself. Uh, introduced himself to me. I was like, yeah. I'm nobody, and, you know. And then uh, he pro uh, proceeded to throw me on the floor forty times. I would have done the first twenty for free, and then, but the the last twenty was what I got paid for. <laughs> yeah, I love it, my friend. Uh, amazing, and we still haven't talked about MMA yet. <laughs> so, how do you start training for MMA? Like, what goes on here? So again, I, during the night in the museum, I. Um, and then, so, oh, I was working with a lot of the stunt guys, and then they're like, hey, you know, I didn't really know martial arts, and, you know, being Asian and stuff, then you should know some. I know that's <laughs> kind of like saying, maybe you should learn some martial arts. Wait, like, wait a I second. Think, wait a second. You're a five uh, sport varsity athlete, and you've got no martial arts experience. Oh, no, actually, no. I, I guess wrestling would count, right? So I guess it would. It I, would. It, so yeah, you're wrestling. In college, okay. I did some wrestling in high school and college and it kind of worked out for me. So, yeah. So, yeah. And then I started training martial arts and then I, I, I and then um, I ended up meeting my coach, uh, who was my friend, at, my friend at the time, Sal Ram. He was a professional um, mixed martial artist at the time. And then he, and he became my coach and one of my, one of my bestest friends, but basically my brother. And yeah. And then we went on this martial arts journey together. Oh, I shout out to all my friends at clinch MMA. <laughs> Nice. So let's talk about that. You you start getting there, and uh, I mean, you fought you know, for uh, one FC, and uh, you fought some big names. You fought Brandon Vera. Yeah, yeah, I did. I oh, briefly. That's the story of my life. Like briefly, you know. So um, yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah, I I was out with. Um, I I think I, I was I went three and one in the uh, region uh, in the Canadian circuit. And then I ended up getting signed by uh, one championship. Um, and yeah, and then I, I did, I kept my winning streak going. So I think I won four or five in a row or something like that. And then, you know, and, you know, originally I thought I was going to get a title shot w with a full training camp, but it didn't work out that way. They gave it to another guy, but hey, buddy didn't show up. I don't know why you wouldn't show up for a world title, but it is what it is. And you know, I was on a, I was on set shooting a, a Fox TV show called Second Chance. I was a character named Albert Lin. And uh, during our hiatus, um, I got a call from Matt Hume and told me I was should, I should, um, I, yeah, I, I should come out. Uh, I'm coming out to do, um, to do a seminar with um, for some Filipino orphans and stuff like that. So I was pretty pumped. And then as I got to the airport at uh, in Tokyo, they uh, they were trying to make sure. I I got on the plane and I was informed I was going to fight Brendan Vera for the World Heavyweight Championship. And so on three days notice. <laughs> wow. So, so yeah, so and, you know, you know, like one of the one of the, you know, like I guess it was a dream. You know, everybody, every, you know, every every uh, every MMA fighter dream of having a title shot, and I got one. And you know, sometimes you you can't, you got you trying to be ready and whatever, but it's like I don't know how you can be ready for. To fight one of your uh, MMA idols in, in front of his home crowd, in front of like, two, three thousand people, in front of the whole damn world, it was pretty. It was well, a pretty intimidating situation, especially. Yeah. Well, especially because you, you you're a big fan of Brandon Vera. I've always loved his style, very very versatile striking style, but he's probably thinking. Who's this 280 or 60, 50 pound huge Taiwanese guy coming in? He's going to be scared and he's going to be trying to really unleash because you you are kind of that intimidating uh, force. Like, and he, you know, he, you can, I, I watched the fight and I was like, Brandon looks actually really worried. <laughs> like, he was scared. Oh, he was I, I, I don't know. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm worried. <laughs> 
I just pretend. I just pretend. <laughs> I was like, man, I, I might have. I have. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I have peed myself a little bit. It is what it is. Uh, you know, I, 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 and I, again, I saw. I still remember watching Brendan Vera. I think if I trade talisman, left kick to the face. And then years crazy. ago, before I started MMA, I, I, was, I think I can do that. And then you know what? That damn, damn happened to me too. <laughs> hey, anyways, hey. I love hey, it, man. Hey, I love it. Hey, 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 what's up, man? Hey, hey, all the respect in the world, champ. Oh, that's awesome. What, thinking back in your career, you've given great advice to guys like uh, uh, Ryan, Christian Ventura. Uh, you, you've given a lot of good advice. You're coaching people. Uh, I hear good things. Uh, where people always talk about you. Um, did you receive any advice from anybody that really helped you through uh, times we needed to hear? You know what? I, I'm going to go back to football, actually. You know, there was a uh, there was a football coach in the, uh, uh, I think Pacific Lutheran University. I, I think his name was Frosty. Uh, Co Anyways, um, he had this thing, just like you know, he had this term, flush it. We have problems, we have a day, flush it. And I'm like, you know, it's like taking a crap on the toilet. You know, when things, when your life things are happening, just press the button, flush it. And it disappears, you know? And then I feel like, you know, there was times in my MMA career or my football career, you know, things weren't going right. And then, you know, and then, but the time, when it's time to go, you just got to put your feelings aside and your problems aside and just press that button and flush it down that toilet. I, that's what I like to, that's what I like to think anyways. So Man, I, I think about that stuff. I just go flush it. Flush it. And it's going to disappear, at least for the, the time being. So, yeah. I love that uh, mentality. Uh, there's a whole uh, series of psychologists and doctors who would say, you just can't flush your problems. You got to go through therapy. I have my degree in psychology. That's the other part of me saying it. But man, if you can flush something that deserves to be flushed, shouldn't you? That's amazing advice. Yeah, I, 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 I'm just telling you guys, I've, I've dealt with some problems and, you know, we, we all have. But just like, you know what? Hey, put your, you know, no matter what, don't bring it in the cage. Don't bring it into competition. Just flush it. Leave it, yeah. leave it outside. And then once you're done, and then they could come back. Because, hey, we go to, we go to the bathroom every day, you know, <laughs> for most people anyway. I love it. Talk to me about uh, your relationship with your family and uh, some of the sacrifices, the things that they've given you. Uh, I, I, you know, my, my parents have, you know, moved. They moved all the way halfway across the world to give me a better life, you know, and I don't think I would have done MMA. I wouldn't play football. I wouldn't have done anything out, you know, probably nothing athletically if they didn't make that sacrifice, you know, even though sometimes they, you know, they've t t told me I'm crazy. Sometimes they told me this and that, but, you know, uh, but after all the things that they've seen me accomplish and then some, you know, there's been times that it's just like, they're like, you know what, sometimes we were wrong about this, you know, like you did do something and we're proud of you. And then I, I I, you know, I, lo I, I love you, mom and dad. And I know my mother, you know, she, you know, I, I still remember, you know, you know, uh, making jewelry, sacrificing herself, you know, time and then letting me to do go to football camps and doing all the things and just to uh, accomplish my dreams. I, I, I don't, I can't um, all like all the love and all the respect and everything in the world. So, yeah, that's yeah. I'm like, no, man, I love it. <laughs> I love it, man. And it shows uh, what a soft you are, even though you're a monster on the screen. Um, real quick, let's talk about what's next for you. And the first thing that's next for you is your co you want to talk a little bit about um, coaching and Alicia? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm currently I'm working at World Champion Club as a MMA coach. And then, hey, if you guys, if you guys, uh, anybody want to uh, start uh, training some MMA or doing kickboxing, whatever, all that stuff, I'm available. Um, you can contact me on um, on Instagram, uh, paul.typhoon.chang, or uh, call World Champion Club, and also my girlfriend, uh, yeah. Alicia Hart. And, and that's she's... in Richmond, B.C.? Yes, in Richmond, yeah. B.C., uh, at the end of number five road near C uh, Stevenson Highway. So, um, yeah, and my girlfriend, Alicia, she's a... I've been training her. She's an up. She's gonna be a good one. She won a couple of uh, kickboxing tournaments. So uh, lo look out for her. 
Um, and, uh, and then, oh yeah, by the way, all the promoters, uh, all the amateur uh, show promoters, um, yeah, go, go, look out for her. She's gonna be, she's gonna be a good one. Sweet, I love it, Paul. Um, thank you for taking the time. I look forward to uh, heading out and seeing you again face to face. Hopefully, in the next couple. Oh, I- no, we had a good laugh. We had a good laugh. <laughs> That's one of the best lunches I've ever had. Even the stuff we we can't talk about, like uh, you being bigger than Bolo Young. But oh, maybe, uh, maybe, yeah, one of these days, yeah, one of those days, one day we'll talk about that kind of stuff. But yeah, there's a lot of things. You know, I, I, life is all twists and turns, and then it's been like bringing all kinds of cool experiences, meeting all kinds of cool people, like like even like all uh, like yourself and. All the people I met through MMA, film, football, and it, I just, you know, it, 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 I think I'm only, I'm 40 years old and it's just getting started. So hopefully yeah. one of these days will be like. You are 100% right, my friend. Uh, you live a blessed life. I am blessed to know you. I look forward to talking to you again. Best of luck with coaching and Alicia and building up that uh, that base. And we'll talk to you again real soon, okay? Yes, I, most definitely. Definitely. Hopefully, next time we'll, we'll, we'll get Alicia on the show once she's once she, she gets a couple of MMA fights and uh, when she turns pro. All right. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank Thanks, so much, brother. Jeff. I really appreciate it. You have the best day.